Hi. I wanted to make a video to show some of the improvements that I made on our Taos Coleman pop-up camper. This is a very light camper and the reason that I bought it is because it's small and it's easy to pull with a multitude of vehicles. I have a Toyota Camry and I have a minivan and I have a small pickup truck and you can pull this camper with any one of those vehicles. I didn't want a large camper that had slides and pop-outs and uh, showers and the like because I wanted to be able to pull it with any vehicle that I needed to. Uh, the biggest shortcoming with this camper was the lack of air conditioning. Now you can buy a rooftop air conditioner unit for a camper like this but I think they start out around four or five hundred dollars and my main goal and just about everything I do with this camper is to keep it very frugal. So thanks to a good friend I had a window unit air conditioner and I chose this way to mount it in the camper. Uh, when deciding to do this I considered multiple options of popping the um, window unit, cutting a hole and popping it out the side of the camper uh, as I've seen a lot of people do. But I favored this option because there was no cutting that needed to be done and very little modification from the camper's original equipment. So basically if you come up close you can see what I got going on here. It's a cheap 5000 BTU uh, window unit air conditioner that a friend gave me for free. Um, it sits in this frame, has a support below it. This frame doesn't attach to the top of the camper here. It simply slides up under the lip and the weight of the air conditioner unit and the bracket or frame make it so that it leans back against this top lip and holds it in place. It is however held at the bottom with a couple of wing nuts and I drilled a hole through this portion of the lip so the wing nut goes all the way through the camper. That way nobody can tug on this and bring 75 pounds down on their head. Uh, we're camping with little kids and safety is important. Um, you can't see it from here but there's a piece of wood on top of the window unit that has holes drilled in it and on the opposite side there are wing nuts that holds this top lip of the air conditioning unit in place. The nice thing about this is that it simply presses up against this portion of screening on the inside of the camper. No hole had to be cut through the screen, no hole had to be cut through the canvas, and no hole had to be cut through the side of the camper. Additionally, it blows out cold air high up so that the cold air falls naturally like, naturally like it should as opposed to having cold air blowing out from uh, a low place which isn't as efficient. So if you come inside you can see, let me just connect the door so it stays open. If you come inside you can see what it looks like from the inside. So this is, here let me scoot around you here, this is the original screening, here are the wing nuts up here that I mentioned uh, when we were on the outside and you can depress the buttons from inside through the screen and the screen doesn't seem to block the airflow to any significant amount uh, from in here, you can manipulate all the buttons and you have nice cold air. Uh, one of the concerns with air conditioning as well is retaining the amount of cool air that you push into the camper and one of the ways we addressed that was I bought a $40 roll of uh, radiant barrier insulation. You can see this is the radiant barrier here. This piece is cut uh, to to go in place here in the winter time so it can cover that whole winter of that whole window when the heat is on or when the air conditioning is on it just fold it down like that. If you look around the camper you'll see that all of the uh, canvas 
uh, windows in between them and the screening. In between them and the screening is pieces of radiant barrier as well. Um, I'll open up the other canvas windows. So you have three on each bunk, then you have a large one on the back of the camper. And I would imagine that this radiant barrier being in all of the windows covers probably 65 to 70 percent of the surface area of the walls of the camper. Um, another couple of things I want to point out is that we wanted to make a, uh, a dinette that drops down into a bed uh, like the original equipment one that came with the camper. When I bought the camper it was missing and broken. You can purchase metal legs and couplers for each end for the floor and for the, the bottom of the table but they're very expensive I think I estimated that uh, the parts alone for the legs would be over a hundred dollars so what I chose to do is purchase these closet flanges uh, from a hardware store I believe I got them at Home Depot they're about three and a half dollars a piece three inch PVC cut to the right size I like a high table because I'm tall everybody in the family's tall and uh, another closet flange at the top uh, you, I don't know if you can see it, but there's another one in the back, just like it. And uh, they lift out of the closet flanges without, well, now that I see it, it's going to give me a problem, but without too much trouble. And once you pull out those PVC tubes, you can take the tabletop and drop it down here and slide the cushions across. And that's the bunk that we have for the kids. The tabletop is just builder grade plywood with uh, one coat of mahogany stain and uh, three coats of polyurethane with a light sanding with 220 grit sandpaper in between. The last thing I'll show you, because you're probably getting bored, is the sink. And I'm getting a little sweaty. <laughs> uh, but if I turn on the air conditioning, I'll probably make noise and you won't be able to hear me. Uh, the original equipment in this camper is this jug here that has a tube. This jug gets stored down in this lower cabinet. Then there's a tube that comes from the sink, goes down to this jug, and you have five gallon water access. And the way you get that is you turn the valve on and you pump up and down. The problem with that is once you let go, your water pressure goes away. It's hard to wash your hands, it's hard to wash dishes, it's hard to do anything with this sink. Uh, so what I wanted was something that I could easy, easily manipulate and uh, leave up on top of the stove here. Originally I was going to use a five gallon bucket, but given that this, the profile of this valve was flat, it would have been hard to use a rounded five gallon bucket. So I looked at using a five gallon kitty litter type container uh, plastic bucket but I couldn't find one of those and then it dawned on me that I had a container that came with the camper that would be ideal so uh, three dollars for this valve this was free at Home Depot I think it's something that you use on a a, uh, a pan for a, a safety pan for a hot water heater or a washing machine I'm not exactly sure what it's from but the thought the hardware store gave it to me for free and a couple little adapters and some Teflon tape so at any rate what you can do with this valve for about a three or four dollar valve is you can turn on the water to whatever amount you want and let it run out kind of like a normal sink would or you can turn it on low to brush your teeth uh, and this drain just simply goes out of the back of the camper and goes right on the ground there's no gray water tank uh, that you might see in some some campers but it's an inexpensive way to deliver a fair amount of water right where you need it right when you need it and uh, instead of, you can either take this to the water spigot with you or you can take gallon jugs and go fill them up and then bring them back here and fill this up 
All right, well, I'm getting a little hot in this camper. It was in the 90s today. So I'm gonna turn my air conditioner back on. I'm gonna put my feet up on the table. And I'm gonna enjoy my improved pop-up camper. Thanks for watching my video.